But in the topic of women's sports, there was a huge ruling today that we would be remiss to not talk about uh, Olivia Moultrie, who, if you are not familiar, uh, she was actually in a Nike commercial, which is how I first heard of her. She was in, I think it was the the first COVID commercial that they came out with. Um, she was like a soccer athlete. And I'm like, who is this? She looks like she's 12 years old. And she was 13 or 14 at the time. So I was correct in assuming that she was very young. Um, but she's now in the Portland Thorns Academy. They have an academy. And she was basically like, why am I not playing for the senior team? I'm really nice. And so she went to court, took the, took, took the team to court, took the league to court, saying, I'm good enough to play for this team, and they won't let me because I'm not 18. If I were a, uh, a boy playing in the MLS, I'd be able to play, no matter what my age was. And if I was of, regardless of gender in Europe, I'd be able to play because they just put the best players on the field. Um, and a court just recently sided with her today on their decision. She has a temporary restraining order, which is – Incredible to see because usually these leagues will just lawyer up and, you know, put some hush money up and uh, yep. the case goes away. So this is a huge ruling. I'm really excited to follow this more. But in regards to what we had just been talking about, could you see maybe, you know, I don't know if there's like a professional softball analog to any of this. I don't know if there's a, a league where you could kind of go pro at this age. Um, but maybe for the WNBA or any of these, you know, the larger women's leagues, uh, could you see more people like either foregoing college and just going straight pro or the NWSL and other women's leagues kind of having to revise their structures to make sure that they're accommodating of people who are good, regardless of age? <laughs> uh, yeah, that's a tough one. I feel like, unfortunately, there's just not enough money in women's sports right now to forego a college education. I feel like, um, you know, you hear so many stories of male athletes who like don't have anything to do after a career ending injury because they like played at some school where they didn't actually get a real education. Um, yep. And now they're like kind of screwed because they're not making that money. Um, yep. And I feel like as a woman in sports, there's not enough money as a professional to really justify not having an education because you always have to be looking for something on the side or doing something on the side and like using um, using other forms of income. Um, so I feel like until there is enough money in professional women's sports to really make that a justifiable decision, they're not gonna be doing that even if it's like allowed. Yeah, sadly, uh, I would agree with that. I think that this Moultrie case is kind of uh, exclusive to her because she is a prodigy and even if she doesn't catch on in the NWSL, she'll go to Europe and she'll be a star somewhere else. She's really, yeah. really, really good. Oh, absolutely. Um, yeah. But that doesn't, yeah. you know, count for all of the millions of other college athletes that will play and, you know, are incredibly good at their at what they do. It's incredibly hard to be a college athlete, but it's also like a million times harder to be a professional just because there are so many so unless those opportunities can present themselves and pay well enough to support yourself, I know that the WNBA just recently was able to pay their players like living wage and where they wouldn't have to work a second job in the offseason. Yeah. So I would agree with that. It sucks that that's the reality. And I hope that, you know, us talking about women's sports and us consuming women's sports will allow for more opportunities to be created because I think us as a generation – like coming out of college now are more interested in just consuming talent, regardless of what that talent looks like or what type of scale it's on. Because, you know, I had the WNBA league pass two years ago and I was like, this is, this is nice. Like it was $20. I go watch every game and you know, there's more shooting than an NBA. I mean, maybe not now, but two years ago, for sure. Two years ago. Yeah. Uh, the, the, the original stretch center was from the WNBA because everyone has to be able to shoot because yeah. there's not really much play at the rim just because the the people aren't as big, which I think objectively yeah. requires more skill. So I'm excited to see the future of, of what this ruling means, because I think it's going to mean there's going to have to be more uh, tolerance in who gets to play. And that goes for all sports, 
not just women's yeah. sports. I think that, you know, the NBA might have to take away the, you know, college part or yeah. Like, well, not even the one and done. It's more just, you could just do it by age. What? Like if once you turn 18, yeah. you can join. If you want to go to college power to you. If you don't power to you, you know, you can, <laughs> you can bet on yourself and you can, uh, or you can bet on going to college for a year and do that or go to college for more than one year. Uh, someone who went to college for four years, I uh, can recommend the experience. Uh, I can't recommend it to your wallet, but the education <laughs> yeah, is <well>. pretty solid. <laughs>